everyone, and thank you again for joining the Speakers Bureau, uh, St. Lucie County Public School Speakers Bureau. The Board of St. Lucie County, as well as our superintendent, uh, we feel that this, import, this uh, program is very important to have for our community so that uh, we can encourage and motivate and inspire you in your home uh, in regards to what you can be and uh, in life, regardless of what has happened in life. So we have some wonderful guests that come and they share their life story with us. And they're willing to open up so that we can understand that, oh my God, if they had to go through and they're doing what they're doing, oh, they were not born with a silver spoon in their mouth, but they have had to go through some hard times. If they can do it, I can do it. And that's what we want you to know. You can make it, you can get through it, you can continue to have a life, and, and we tell you this through our stories. Uh, so uh, today we have with us Miss Veronica Kolibab. Close, Kolibab. Oh, I'm close, mm -hmm. Kolibab. She's the director of the business development for Nice Roofing mm -hmm. and Construction, and she's also, which I love, a certified integrative uh, nutrition health coach and owner of that business. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit, uh, Miss Veronica, thank you first of all so much for coming. Thank you. And for accepting to be a guest on the Speakers Bureau. We want to start out before we start asking you about your own life as a child and teenager and young adult and now uh, older adult, right? <laughs> yes. uh, before we get into that, tell us a little bit about your businesses and, and, and why you went into those professions. Well, I've been in business development for probably about 15 years, and I absolutely love building businesses. Mm -hmm. I'm really great at cultivating relationships, which 99% of business is done because somebody likes somebody. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. They get to know them. They're qualified, but you know, you cultivate those relationships. And I've built several businesses over the years, and I just love the opportunity to help a business to grow to the next level. So I love Nice Roofing because they're just incredible humans. Mm -hmm. uh, they give back a lot to the community. They do an amazing job. You can count on them. They've been around a long time, super qualified. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as my business, the Eating with V business, my company's V Lifestyle Inc., um, but my show is Eating with V, so I DBA Eating with V. Mm -hmm. And that so where can you, we find your show? Actually, my website. Mm -hmm. So it's just eatingwithv.com. Okay. V like Veronica. Yes. Yeah, okay. and that came about because of an illness. Mm -hmm. So from life trials, I got really sick, and um, every food that I was eating was bothering me, so I couldn't have so many things. And I ended up having to give up gluten, dairy, mm -hmm. and sugar for mm -hmm. a long time, 20 years ago, which mm -hmm. was not easy back then. Mm -hmm. And then not I was, easy today. It's not easy I'm today. I'm supposed to give up now, so <laughs> I need to see you after the show. <laughs> we'll talk for sure. But yeah, so then it, it kind of just grew into, you know, my passion was creating all these foods and I just kept doing it. So I went to school for that, mm -hmm. uh, integrative nutrition, and, um, and ended up deciding I've, for, I've, for years I've wanted my own show just to help as many people as I could because mm -hmm. it's a big challenge today. Mm -hmm. And so I finally started the show this past year. So that's oh, exciting. Oh, yeah. wow. And I do label reading. I teach people how to read labels, which is really important. A mm -hmm. lot of that is just free right from my website. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, make sure that I get that website, that get your card before you leave here. Yes. Um, I happen to have met uh, Miss Veronica at a construction builders association. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, Thank goodness for Nice and other building construction companies that are giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. um, now, you talked a little bit about each of those. You mentioned something about uh, illness that you went through where everything you were eating was actually not good for you maybe. Mm -hmm. I know I went through a time in life where everything I ate made me itch. Mm -hmm. And um, I do like now make sure I take um, my um, allergy medicine and it keeps it from happening. But if I don't take that med, those meds, I'll go back to everything that I eat makes me itch. Wow. So what's, what is that all about? Do you know? Well, I don't take meds, um, but, and I think that a lot of times what we're finding is diet has a lot to do with it. 
So if a person has an allergy to grains, they could have a variety of different conditions from mental to physical, and the same with gluten or dairy. People don't even realize that they have those challenges because of the food. Mm -hmm. Or it could be a pesticide that's on something, or a lot of the foods are genetically modified, so mm -hmm. our bodies don't know how to process them yeah. properly. It was strange because I actually went to the doctor for it mm. and got tested for all type of allergies. You know, they give you the, the whole nine yard of testing yeah. to see what you're allergic to, and all of them came back fine. Wow. So yeah, so that's that's pretty weird. And I just do the over-counter uh, Claritin type thing, and I'm yeah. fine, but I have to take it. Did you try any omission diets or anything, like where you take things out just to see if you... No, I haven't done that. Oh, no. there's some, we'll talk more about that. Yes, mm -hmm. so tell us. Um, uh, your life as a child, how was it childhood for you? Um, where were you born, you know? Uh, uh, what did you experience and how did you end up here in St. Lucie County? Well, um, I was born in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and traveled quite a bit. My mother and father were divorced at a very young age mm -hmm. and my mom was a traveling nurse. So I kind of lived oh. in probably seven or eight different states. So I went school to school to school um, until my father passed at 14. Mm -hmm. And my father ended up committing suicide when I was 14. He had a lot of, he was an alcoholic, he was abusive, he had a lot of mental problems. Mm -hmm. And um, as a grown up, I can look back and say, you know, man, I wish somebody could have helped him. There's a lot more help for people today yes. than there was so back then. So this happened when, what year, or do you know? Uh, 1985. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. showing my age. Yeah. A lot more help <laughs> we have now, but uh, that too, people have to reach out and ask for help. And there's a lot of folks that sometimes they don't do that. Yeah. And I've, I've learned a long time ago not to just sit in my own thoughts, but to hear the thoughts of others, mm -hmm. you know, and, and anything that's good and that's pure and that's right and that's true, to learn from those other thoughts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And to be able to silence our own mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a challenge today because everybody has so much chatter, chatter, chatter going on in their brain. And we don't ever get the opportunity to slow it down and just be one with, you know, our creator. Yeah. And I think that's when the most inspiration comes when we can actually just silence the talking voice, the monkeys in the mm -hmm. mind, you mm -hmm. know, because mm -hmm. that's important. It is. Yes. So uh, growing up, as a kid in Pennsylvania. When did you move here? When, what did, what happened in between the time? Oh, yeah. Know? So when my father passed is how I came to Florida. My mother lived here in Florida. So there was a mix, you know, obviously with the good and the bad. I think my best childhood memories, I loved the country, you know, especially for children growing up. You know, every time I would go home mm -hmm. to the country, there's, you know, the farms, it's peaceful, it's, you know, mm -hmm. spread out, it's not congested, mm -hmm. it's slower paced, not mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. So even now when I go back, I can, you know, I feel like a kid when I go to Pennsylvania, I just love the country, mm -hmm. but I love it here too. Mm -hmm. I would never leave Florida. I love the weather, I love everything about it. Mm -hmm. But I came here at 14 after my father okay. passed because okay. my mom was here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So mom was here, dad was in Pennsylvania. Did mm -hmm. you grow up with dad? I was back and forth back between and forth them between both. Back and forth between the two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then at 14, you came where in Florida? Fort St. Lucie. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I've lived on the Treasure Coast since 1985. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And back then, at Fort St. Lucie was almost like being in Pennsylvania. There was <laughs> nothing here. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Because yeah. I, I moved here in uh, Fort St. Lucie in 1997 from Fort Pierce. Uh -huh. And I mean, all the deer was out there, and the, and I mean, in your backyard, easily seeing a family of deers or walking across while you're waiting for the gate to open up, you know. Yeah. And or I, the fox yeah. or the you know yeah. the animals that aren't. Yeah, so. we don't see it as much now. So, mm. it, it, I think it's it's so important to enjoy those things while we have them because they're not always going to be sometimes, you know. Yeah. So when you moved here to Port St. Lucie, were you like on a farm, kind of like with a lot of land or horses no. or nothing? No, right in old Port St. Lucie, it was, the, it's now Veterans Memorial Parkway, but it was yes. Midport Road years ago. Okay. So that's where we lived originally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I built a couple houses here in Port St. Lucie. Like, I got married very young, my first marriage. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And But we built a house together. Gosh, I was 20 at the time. Mm -hmm. So we had built a first house. And then when I remarried years later, 
Um, we had built a house together, too, in Port St. Lucie. Okay. But I recently moved to Fort Pierce. I love Fort okay. Pierce. Okay. So did you have children? No children. Okay. All right. Mm -mm. Did you go to school uh, other than, yes. you know, you were 14? So what mm -hmm. high school did you attend? I, I went to Fort Pierce Central when okay, it was still on Edwards. School. It was still on Edwards Road at that time. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Not yes. where it is now. No, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, and I, unfortunately, I had some situations with my mother um, when I was right around 15-ish. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, just a weird situation, but I ended up in a shelter um, at 16, and then I had to school in there and so I got my GED in there because this was a process and it would have put me far behind. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to college at um, Indian River. It was Indian River Community College at that yes. time. Yes. Oh, it's boy, do you bring my memories back. <laughs> no, it's yeah. Indian River State mm -hmm, College. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so um, that well, was Well, I, my too, got my GED at 16. Did you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Up north. And then um, got, you know, got married and moved here and then went to IRSC when it was IRCC. Yep. As well. Oh, and got my fun. AA degree wow. there and then went to FAU and then from there just continued to go on. But, you know, just your some of the background that you've given me already shows that you can have some tremendous challenges in life and can overcome those challenges. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that I think the challenges make us who we are. Mm -hmm. You I know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's how we decide to move forward with through those challenges and then we can turn around and help other people. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I believe the infliction with the illness for the food created the passion to help other people in the same spot. Because I so I'm not, agree with you. Yeah, I'm not I afraid so, yeah. to step up and step yeah. out as much I, as I yeah. hate being on video. Yeah. You know, starting that show yeah. is huge. Because you have a passion to help I, people yes. get, get through what you know you went through and that they can get through it. Yes. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, because just the point about you saying something about no sugar, and I'm like, how can you get through no sugar, you know? <laughs> but she did it, so there must be a way. You know? There's a way to do it, I promise. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, and, I, and as I think through my own childhood memories, uh, it was, and, and not just childhood, but adult memories, it's, it's the decision you said. It's what you decide to do because you can allow it to break you or build you. Exactly. And you can even go a step further as you have, not only build yourself, but then you can turn around and build others. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, statistically, I should be um, living on the streets or, mm -hmm. you know, dancing in a, a club somewhere. Not that there's anything wrong with that or, you know, being mm -hmm. an alcoholic or a drug mm -hmm. addict or homeless or something. I mean, statistically, with all of, if you add up all of the things, you know, over the years that have happened, and that's just a snippet, mm -hmm. you know, that statistically I yeah. shouldn't have my own business. Yeah. I shouldn't be the director right, of right, business development. Right. <laughs> my last speaker spoke of that when she said she decided to go to IRCC and go to college. Mm -hmm. And from there, she went on and took her to the next level, the next level. But she mentioned that it saved her life. I said, well, Tell us how did going to college save your life? Mm -hmm. And she explained to us that if she had not went, she would only have been able to do minimum work all of her life. That's how she feels. Yeah. I mean, there's people that you don't have, everybody don't have to go to college. Mm -hmm. But um, we know that that paper helps a person move from one salary level to the next. Oh, yeah. So there's, there's something good about that. And, and the other thing you mentioned about you starting your own business you know, doing something that's going to make a difference in your life and therefore in the lives of others. Mm -hmm. So did, do you remember, you mentioned that you, um, you know, in your background you moved a lot because your mom was a traveling nurse. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also with your, after you got here, you know, you had some struggles. So you didn't do a whole lot of schooling in the traditional public school system, mm -hmm. but you had somebody teach you something mm -hmm. to get you to where the next stage. So is that, who would be your hero? Who would be that person or people that you reflect on and you say, that person made a difference in my life and helped me in my course? Um, well, my education was great, but I think the person that impacted me the most was my best friend, Dawn. We've been friends for 20, almost 30 years and I think she helped me to toughen up 
okay. and was always there, 100%, no matter what I was going through in my life, mm -hmm. supporting me, you know what I mean, helping me, mm -hmm. um, listening to me, mm -hmm. toughening me up. She's always a tough bird. Wow, so Dawn <laughs> made a difference in your life. Yes, for sure, but I had a lot of great teachers, the coaches along the way. Mm -hmm. I believe that everybody should have a coach or mentor of some sort. Mm -hmm. I've had several coaches over the last 15 years um, in personal development, mm -hmm. and um, they each took me to the next level. Okay, yeah. is there, um, do you have a hero? And that hero could be alive, it could be someone who, someone of the past or, you know, my hero, just to give you a little idea, mm -hmm. my hero is Harriet Tubman. And the reason why she's my, and, and the other, she wasn't my hero alone, the Underground Railroad. Yeah. Because back then, when you reflect on what my people went through, mm -hmm. this woman was willing to travel after she got her own freedom, go back. And over and over and over again and finally you know helped others get free but she didn't do it alone if it wasn't for that underground railroad she would have never been able to do it so you had a lot of people that were willing to risk their lives to help others mm -hmm. and they are my hero so now saying that you can have one that's still living <laughs> well there are so many there, um, there are really th there's so many about. people that I respect and admire I don't think that I could pinpoint it to just one mm -hmm. because there's so many people that inspire me. I understand me. that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just that as far as someone in my personal life, I think Dawn would be my hero. Oh, your friend? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's a great friend. Yeah. Great friend. Dawn, will you be my friend, too? <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> well, I told you, she said she, you said she was tough. <laughs> <laughs> she is tough. <laughs> That's what I need, Dawn. I need somebody <laughs> tough. <laughs> What's your favorite music? I love Karen Drucker music. She's very inspirational mm -hmm. because I, I'm also a belief clearing certificate. I'm certified in uh, belief clearing. And that means the things that hold us back in life that we're not even aware of. And music is actually one of the things that we program our mind with. So when you sing a song like, you can't always get what you want, that's a great song, but you're dancing around feeling good, singing you can't always get what you want. Mm -hmm. So we're programming our mind that mm -hmm. we can't always get what we want, mm -hmm. which isn't true. Mm -hmm. So Karen Drucker music is all about inspiring us. You know, I am beautiful, I am powerful, down to like, let me just be calm and still. Mm -hmm. All of this beautiful music that she has that, mm -hmm. and if I'm not out somewhere listening to live music, because I don't go out often, but when I do, I like live music. Mm -hmm. But as far as in my home, all I listen to is like Karen Drucker music. I just love her stuff. And I can see why. Yeah, I can see the, the inspiration of programming your mind to say, I am woman, I am now, you know, I, yeah. that type of thing. I for, am powerful, For me, it's, I got it's gospel music. <laughs> yeah. Because when I hear the word, I mean, it just can, flips your mind. Mm -hmm. Just flips your mind when you got good words that's put together with the music. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now. If you could, here's a deep one. Okay. If you could only keep two or three possessions, what would they be? Uh, if everything else had to go. Definitely the flag from my father's funeral. Mm -hmm. It's all folded up and beautiful. I have it in my office. Mm -hmm. um, I have the cross from my grandmother's funeral. Mm -hmm. I would keep that. And probably just my, there's certain little knickknacks that mean things to me. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I'm not a materialistic person. Mm -hmm. It's just certain things that touch my heart mm -hmm. that I would keep. What did you major in in school? Um, actually accounting, which I yeah. despise <laughs> today. <laughs> See, that's the opposite about what you about now today. <laughs> accounting, I just can't stand it. <laughs> choose it I liked it back then okay you know now I'm more of the creative You're good with the, the, the with the numbers yeah I'm good with the numbers I just dislike it so much um, <laughs> I really enjoy it. when I got certified I went to the Institute of Integrative Nutrition out of New York and I got certified in um, integrative nutrition health coaching mm -hmm. and I it's the creative part the learning part the helping people part that i love now the behind the scenes stuff i don't love so much because mm -hmm. it t keeps me from doing the parts of it that i love yeah so you have to choose that's why the young people now today say i want to do what i love i don't want to just 
you know, just become this because I'm good at it. I want to do something that I love. Yeah. And I think that's great as long as it can pay your bills. Exactly. you got to <laughs> pay your bills. <laughs> How do you spend your free time? Uh, right now, I spend my free time working, um, mm -hmm. creating more content for the videos. I do little short clip videos for people um, and putting together, making foods because a lot of people don't want to make Food. So right now I will make stuff under the Home Sweet Home Act and sell it occasionally, like a couple times a month I'll sell it and it just raises more money for the shows. Mm -hmm. um, I do spend time clearing my mind, so I like meditation, Psyche, k you know, different mm -hmm. modalities that help to clear me so that do I... Do you have any favorite books you can share with us? Everything I read, honestly, is recently is either spiritual mm -hmm. or um, learning something about my trade. But I love, um, oh gosh, what was the name of the book? Well, The Magic is one of my favorites by Rhonda Byrne. Mm -hmm. So similar to The Secret, but very different. Mm -hmm. It's a book about gratitude, and it's, a, it's an adventure. It's like a 28-day immersion mm -hmm. in gratitude. It's not a read-through book. Mm -hmm. It's something that every single person I've turned on to it has seen some shift somewhere incredible in their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gratitude is very important. It is. You know, just being thankful for what you have right. rather than looking at all the things you don't have. Exactly. Um, and truly being thankful, you know. Um, some of those things that we take for granted, you know. Uh, a week ago I was walking. Today, because of the pain, that nerve, mm -hmm. I'm not walking. Exactly. So to be very thankful to be able to walk, to be able to hear, to be able to see, those things that we take for granted, mm -hmm. looks like the breathing, distance. breathing, oh <laughs> water that comes yeah, out of your shower. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> How many people don't have a hot shower? Yeah. Oh <laughs> you know, God. all over the world. Yeah, There's so many uh, like that. If I was speaking to one of your friends right now, how would your friends describe you? What do you think they would say about you? Well, I know for sure they would say that I'm the most positive person that they know. <laughs> Maybe a little too positive sometimes, but I don't think that's possible. Mm -hmm. And they would say that I am always helping other people. You know, that I'm always connecting people mm -hmm. or helping people make connections. Mm -hmm. So I think those two things, always positive, and that I, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably one of the most brutally honest people <laughs> on the planet. Oh, I love folks like that. Yeah. Because then you know, you know, you can talk through things or whatever is not fake. Yeah. You know, it's genuine. Yeah. Even if it's something that, oops, you know. You might not like it, right. <laughs> but it's uh, always the truth. <laughs> my last my last guest, I noticed when you came in and you guys were switching up, um, you knew her. Yeah. And, um, and then you mentioned something about both of y'all in the women's club. Mm-hmm. So, um, boy, it sounds like y'all must have a really good time because she kept me smiling the whole time and you're so positive. <laughs> I, I, need, I need to join the women's Come club. Come and join the Fort well, Pierce Women's Club. Why don't you let us know where the women's club is? Yeah. And when, when, when do they meet? A Fort Pierce Women's Club. Uh, there, there's actually the chamber does a lunch in there every month on the first mm -hmm. Friday. Yes. And yes. then the women's club has all kinds of activities. So if they go online to the women's club, it's the Fort Pierce Women's Club. Oh, so that's different from the Chamber's w Women's Club event. Yeah, the Chamber. They, they have theirs. There's all part of it. Yep. But that's they, just one activity among many. Yeah, so yes, oh, the Women's realize. Club gives back to the community. They're, they're not so much a networking group mm -hmm. as they are a give back group to the community. Mm -hmm. But you meet a lot of dynamic, wonderful women there. Great. I have to have time. <laughs> yeah, that's the trick. That's the time. <laughs> so um, you mentioned a little bit about your profession. Mm -hmm. Tell me, you went into accounting, but then you decided you didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So you have your degree. You have a, a bachelor's in accounting or a master's? Nope, or? I do not have a degree in accounting. Okay. So I ended up getting married really young, mm -hmm. and so it was right to work. Okay. And so I didn't have the opportunity. Now, I've, I've gone back and taken courses over the years, mm -hmm. but I decided that if I was going to get my certification, it was going to be in something that I wanted to do, which right. was integrative nutrition. Okay, okay. And so, uh, talking a little bit more about that, and I know you mentioned, talked to us about how you went in that field to help others, mm -hmm. but what happened to you that caused you to say, I need to, I found out the answer for me and I need to now try to help others. What happened? 
Well, you know, from a very stressful childhood to a very stressful teenage, you know, like my body was always like under stress, mm -hmm. probably up until I was in my 30s. And that's when I got sick. And sick being like incredibly painful stomach, um, everything that I ate bothered my body. I just felt bad mm -hmm. all the time. I was always in pain. And when I found out what it was, it was food allergies originally. Mm -hmm. And so I took all of those things out of my diet for a full year, felt better. So I started reintroducing some of those things. Well, again, I had a stressful, you know, in my 30s, things happened, you know, picked bad choices in humans. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up sick, really sick. And um, it was, I had a form of candida that isn't a normal form of candida. Like mm -hmm. I was probably on my way to a deadly cancer. Mm -hmm. And so I had to give up everything at once. No sugar, no gluten, no dairy, no grains, no this, no that. Like I could only eat real food, proteins, vegetables. Um, I couldn't have anything that converted to sugar, no rices, no mm -hmm. potatoes, mm -hmm. none of those things. And so to have to do that for a whole year was so hard. Oh, yes. But it definitely created, it, my creative, uh, my creativity like exploded because now I had to figure out how can I make foods that I can eat and I lost a bunch of weight. Mm. And so when, as I came up with these foods, people would try them, they'd be like, oh my gosh, these are so good. So I just continued to learn and make things and do things. And I did it as a side thing. I would food blog. I food blogged for years for free, just did it. Mm -hmm. And then after I, I decided I was going to get my certification because I said, you know what? I see so many people need help. There's so many people that don't know how to eat this way. So they just eat whatever and stay sick. So that was my decision. I said, you know, my passion, my infliction fueled my passion. Mm -hmm. And now I'm on a mission. <laughs> and thank you so much for being on that mission. Um, thank I'm, you. I'm truly going to, after this, we're going to talk a little bit more here because. I can't wait. Um, as you be, as you are on your mission, I think you've discovered someone that you can help. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's great. So, okay. So your your educational background is certified in this particular field. Yes. Okay. And do you have? I guess because I'm most interested in what you're doing. Do you have? You said you have like blogs and stuff that you put out. Do you have something where you say? teach people how to fix and prepare certain types of food? I, the show, my show is called Eating with V, mm -hmm. and that teaches people, I bring a certain guest on the show, whether it's some form of integrative health professional. Like mm -hmm. I have doctors come on, I have, mm -hmm. I want a dentist to come on, I'm still trying to find somebody, but I bring on different health, different health coaches um, mm -hmm. to tell their different what they do, because I don't coach people individually, I coach like more group style, okay. and I want to teach online like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I also teach in person, label reading, hidden sugar classes that are mm -hmm. very comprehensive. I have people calling me to teach those around town. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways to learn with me. Well, Miss Veronica, thank you so much for coming and sharing thank your you. life with us and, and encouraging us that yeah, you go. We go through things in life, and we we, we hit uh, some of hills, some of mountains, some of valleys. Mm -hmm. But how we can be all that we can be in the midst of that, and uh, and then be so much of who we are that we can then help others be what they would desire to become too. Thanks. And thank you to your friend <laughs> who has been so instrumental in your life uh, that have to the point that you would call her a hero. Mm -hmm. Thank you, those of you that are out there and you're doing exactly what Miss Veronica Friend did in her life. You're helping someone else. You know, I always tell people we have to get out of ourself and, and look at who we can help, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes we just think it's all, it's just, woe is me, it's all about me, or, mm -hmm. you know. And that does not bring joy and happiness and gratitude in one's life. So. Um, thank you so much for coming, for being our guest today. And thank you. Hopefully we'll have an opportunity to have you on at a later date. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Veronica. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. <laughs>